Okay, um, today I wanted to go over a book that uh, I shared with my editor. He and I have been having some creative differences uh, about design and uh, I shared him this book and we finally found some common ground, which I was really grateful for. This is called uh, Veins of the Earth uh, by Patrick Stewart and Scrap Princess. Patrick Stewart is not uh, Captain Picard, but um, he does the writing uh, for Veins of the Earth. Um, this is a pretty thick book. Um, I love it very much. It's one of my favorites. I use it all the time for 5th edition, for OSC, for whatever I'm running. Um, shit, man, I use some of this for Call of Cthulhu. Um, this is uh, an encounter chart on a D50, uh, talking about the shape of a cave, uh, the kinds of stones, uh, smells and sounds and things. That's just the, that's just the inside cover. Already it, it's incredibly useful. Um, these are a hundred different encounters, uh, so if you roll to 23, you encounter the city of the opaque eye, ruled by doom. Um, so a lot of this just kind of, it's very, it's written and, uh, arted very frenetically. Um, this is a trilobite night. Uh, alright, so, I mean, it starts off with kind of like, uh, basically monsters, just a ton of monsters. It talks about specific civilizations within the veins of the earth. The veins of the earth is uh, basically the um, the Underdark, right? Like this is the uh, kind of an indie view, uh, an indie punk rock view of the Underdark. Um, there are uh, new rules for darkness, um, which are kind of like the DM in this kind of situation is literally called the darkness. He embodies the darkness. He, he plays the darkness at the edge of your light. Nobody has infravision or dark vision in, uh, when you're playing Veins of the Earth. Everybody, you know, everybody needs a lantern. Uh, the, the, um, uh, the, 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 you, the, you don't use gold so much as you use uh, looms. Uh, which is the number of, of like, it's like an hour of light from a lantern or a torch. Um, it gives some rules on encumbrance and exploration and climbing. Uh, it, talk, it gives a, the DM a whole bunch of ways to generate a cave and cave system. Uh, there's special items and treasure, uh, different madnesses, uh, and then the, some of the most useful appendices ever. Um, all right. So, again, another trilobite night, and this one says, uh, The frightful bulk of night feebly pushed aside for a moment as quickly and with an irresistible violence regains empire. Um, talks, uh, I think Patrick Stewart is a bit of a spelunker, so he's taking uh, his experience as a spelunker and kind of adding it to veins of the earth. Um, and giving a, a little bit more meat uh, and edge uh, to normal dungeon crawls. This is an angler lich. Um, an angler lich uh, is, um, well, the, the lich will be non-lethal. It isn't designed to win. It waves around like a conductor's baton, wisps away and appears in strange places with no explanation. It's a, a, a very... A uh, strange uh, creature, as you can see. Um, yeah, so uh, there's the Anti Phoenix, and uh, it is uh, quite a large entry. Uh, but as you can see, there are tons and tons atomic bees, um, and they always come with kind of weird uh, things that they can do giga ferrets, calcinated bears, uh, cambermen. Um, Collarids are uh, w one of the things that uh, I've always found w uh, really fucked up. Um, you know, it, it, these are, they're like, um, they're like zombies, but they're still living. And they, they're people who suffer from terrible, terrible disease. And so the guy gives uh, a, a collarid type uh, for each kind of disease, like Ebola and flu and rabies. <laughs> Um, and, uh, <laughs> it's really fucked up to encounter cholerids in the, um, in the Underdark. Uh, the Civilipede is a giant, uh, is, is, is a colossal, uh, uh, centipede that crawls through the veins of the earth, um, and has things living upon it, like whole civilizations upon it, and it's collecting, um, it's collecting artifacts of, of the, 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 the past, um, there's a, 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 a like 
all kinds of weird and fucked up creatures in this guy's fucking head. Uh, these are the myconid versions. They're called fungonoids, and uh, he gives gives one for each kind of mushroom he can think of. Um, uh, there's a a Gilgamesh. One of the Gilgameshes is cool. When you encounter a Gilgamesh, it's kind of like a, 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 a clanking patchwork of clay and stone. And um, it, the, it'll say something. You roll a d12 like three times, um, and it'll say like, so, so let's say a two, a five, and a six. Uh, so a two, uh, the last remaining watcher in the Temple of Infinite Night, uh, brought to life by the desperate sorrow of my people as the temple I was a, a part of was destroyed by barbarians. So I am uh, the last remaining watcher in the Temple of the Infinite Night. Uh, I was made by uh, and brought to life by the desperate sorrow of my people as the temple I was a part of was destroyed by barbarians. I must seek out the dark tapestries of demikaz and assemble them to show the place of the last clue uh, to the crystal dream of Asherah. So you get the general idea, right? Like, there's all these creatures, knotsmen or uh, twisted uh, dudes, and there's there's uh, an incredible, um, uh, j j just uh, anything that comes to a sick and twisted mind that might be encountered in the dark, you know? Um, it's a huge book. Uh, the psychomyosis uh, me megaspores uh, are one of the most terrifying things from whenever I played in Veins of the Earth. Uh, these are uh, like fungus uh, spores that, that float above and then drop on your head, eat all the flesh off of your skull, and kind of turn you into a glowing uh, spore-headed zombie. Um, they're absolutely awful. They kind of float above your head and above the shield guard. Um, so you, you'll encounter all sorts of weird scissor fish. Scissor fish make uh, uh, cool knives that do 1d4 damage, and if you roll a 4, then you roll a second d4. The, 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 the damage die explodes and add it to, the in, in, to indicate the ripping flesh as the knife is pulled out. Um, so if you take their, their like teeth, that, that's, you can turn it into a knife. Uh, the sonic pigs are disgusting. Um, you know, like... Tachyon trolls or, or <laughs> you know, and it'll utter something like, let's say I rolled a four, fallen limbs are the trolls' only tears. My weeping is but little, though the drops live on. Um, you'll encounter a, a, a great number of these things, um, and it's, uh, you know, the culture section talks about the Alpha Dao, which are like the the Stuart's vision of the drow. Um, they're even more fucked up than you could imagine. I love the art here. I cannot tell you how I love the art. The Deep Janine are like earth elementals. Um, the Darrow uh, are Darrow, um, and they are as mad as could possibly be. Um, these are the sickest, fuckest creatures in the... Like, they're just crazy. Absolutely insane. The Dvagir, the Dvagir are... Uh, are um, they have a flow chart to kind of about work. Um, lawful evil in the extreme, man. Uh, you get all kinds of um, uh, civilizations that it goes over. And then the sections on law and uh, dark um, is... Uh, it, 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 these talk, it talks about what happens when your character runs out of light and how the darkness takes them. Then there's uh, different kinds of lamps. Um, your initiative is determined uh, by the lumen in your lamp, like how bright it is. Um, it kind of determines uh, your initiative when you get to go. Um, the character sheet is laid out a little bit different. It's like a old school, uh, you know, character uh, with uh, different um, attributes, uh, lamentations you could use. Um, there's a uh, Shannon's favorite part, which is encumbrance. Um, there's a section on climbing. Um, like I said, uh, you you kind of run down all of your stats, and then it gives a it gives the DM a, a way to understand uh, what happened. Um, it's a, a very very challenging. Um, I uh, I look forward to it. Uh, this is the section on how to make uh, a vein. I, I particularly lo I love the way that 
Veins of the Earth maps. Um, instead of a, a traditional map, you, you use this format, and so you go from room to room in your cave system, like a, a, a cave would be very large, and then you, you organize it like uh, uh, as a square with the top and bottom, and then it kind of, you move the line into the section um, where it appeared, and then you number the room based upon its, uh, its light, uh, its, its size, sorry. Um, so a map would look like this, right, where you have the different kinds of, of tunnels between them, uh, whether it's a squeeze or, a, you know, a walk or um, whatnot, and where that tunnel comes in to the next large chamber or uh, small chamber. Um, it tells, you know, it gives some, some great ways to describe the, what you've generated, um, and uh, then, you know, kind of gives like an even macrocosmic view of everything. Um, I, uh, I, I find this, uh, this book to be incredible, like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not even, like, this is a hundred different caves, like, let's just choose a random one here. This is a, a phreatic maze, uh, fallen stone or shattered faults, cracked, crooked and flooded, hip width paths. Uh, a nightmare of irregular broken rocks, waist high, full of water. Imagine a bucket of smashed slates piled, an ant to navigate them. Y you are the ant. The path walls grow face close. You turn side on. You know, um, so even the, the descriptions, names of people, you can use these this, like little images to describe the people. Um, and then uh, the magic items, you know, like uh, there's a, an, a, a, an item chart that is, I search the body, <laughs> you know, and uh, if you rolled an 89, you get 50 feet of nightingale chain, uh, slender, light as rope, sing softly under pressure. You know, um, these are treasures you might find on the Civilipede, um, just uh, all kinds of weird shit, you know. Um, and then you've got uh, the way that madness works and food. Um, you've got the effects of, of that madness and you can just roll on, on the, like just tons of charts. It talks a, a bit about hypothermia. Um, and then we get into the appendices, you know, and there's different kinds of dark uh, to describe. You can roll when somebody asks for a room description uh, or when their lanterns go out or when you know, you, you, whenever the characters encounter dark, let's say uh, we got a 10 here, it's explosive dark, ripping out and hurrying away, arriving unexpectedly but rhythmically and to some pl plan hidden from you. It wheels and circles and shoots rapidly from place to place, running madly in self-set vectors. It wants attention and tr attracts it, happy when you are looking at it and into it. Its movements are seductive and seem like lively and lifelike. It wants to burn you and see you burn. Um, scrap. The dark uh, flickers here like the edge of campfire, an impish, plottish thing. Assume any accident, inattention, or neglect that could start a fire will. Scar dark. Um, this is the language of the Knotsman. Uh, they, yeah, uh, and so... Uh, here's another way to uh, generate caves using just random dice and how they fall on the table. Um, gives a couple of examples of such things. Uh, and then a glossary of the terms that he uses. Um, and uh, <laughs> a bibliography is included, uh, as well as a, a very comprehensive index. Um, Veins of the Earth is just simply one of the best books that's ever been written for role-playing games. Um, and, uh, that's how it goes. Thank you. Uh.